Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve of That Church, and we are in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, or <laughs> chapter 6 of Acts. This is good, isn't it? As we are going through here, we're getting more and more from God exactly how to live out this life. And we're seeing the unfolding of the church figuring out what they're supposed to do. Isn't that encouraging? Because if they don't know everything to do, and we don't know everything to do, that's encouraging to us, right? Okay, so let's start off with a word of prayer and we'll get right into it. So, Father God, it's you that we're looking to. We, we all need you so much, Father God. Each one of us, we're looking to you, Lord. But more than that, we want you. We want you to come in and explain your word to us, to teach us your word, to show us how we're supposed to be in this time. And we look to you for everything in our lives. Father, we want you and need you. Come in and be everything, everything for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we get started, like I said, we're in Acts chapter 6. And it's Friday. It seemed as if we had an offering message yesterday. But what is this? Us offering our lives today is a good thing, isn't it? And and we see that these this, these disciples, though they were with Jesus uh, for three or three and a half years here, right? They they're still looking into how to run the church, how to do this administration of the church, and and today is a a specific day. Uh, we're looking at, you know, after after so much time. So they had 3,000 the first day, another 2,000 the next day, it seemed, right? And, and here, were these just days we were looking at? And then it says, at the right beginning of chapter 6, it says, Now about this time, when the number of the disciples was greatly increasing, complaint. Uh-oh, complaints. Complaints coming in already. Uh, what do you do with complaints? They hadn't had complaints up to now, right? I don't know. They they had complaints from the city officials. Uh, I say city officials, the, the Sanhedrin, you know, right? So they were coming against them. But now it, it's seeming as though people are, are being selfish in a way, right? Looking, we're... we're we're being not done everything with that we think we should be done with. And as we come down into this, it says, um, the, this complaint was made by the Hellenists, the Greek-speaking Jews, Greek-speaking Jews, against the native Hebrews uh, because their widows were being overlooked and neglected in the daily ministration distribution of relief now if there's a distribution of relief why wasn't there before the church began and now there's not what was it the temple doing it before and now they they took on uh the the ways of the church and they're seeing wait now we're not being seen to and and others are being seen to and we're not and oh what do we do now I, I, we're feeling neglected and here was it up to now that the 12 disciples are uh, the, the 12 apostles are are they doing all of it seeing to everybody running around and 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 getting the food to who it needs to get be gotten to and man they can't get to everybody are our, our some are being neglected uh our, our some are you know looked down upon is is what they're they're throwing a, a card in there that i think that there's some other things being said here but we're not going to get so much into that but we see that the 
the apostles, the 12 apostles convened so that they could make a decision. They, they maybe went into prayer and got something from God and now they're bringing it to the people. As, as they do this, um, I'm going to read verse 2. So the 12 apostles um, convened, uh, convened the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not seemingly and desirable or right that we should have to give up or neglect preaching the word of God in order to attend and to serving at tables and superintending the distribution of food. So they were doing it all as the way they made it just sound. And then they're saying, we're, we're going to head toward the duties that God's calling us to, and we need others to see to others. This is where you see the ministry of helps. The helps ministry really comes into view right here where they say, all right, gather together these seven men. And here, is it just these seven men? Are these seven men going to go out and get seven men each? And then get each one of those, get three each? To help with the distribution, to help to do things. And, and I think this is a, a lot in the way of, of what you see in Exodus 35.5, where Moses is, is telling, I'm sorry, God's telling Moses now, I'm going to ha have certain people, whoever has it in their heart, come and do these things for the temple. And then he selected a group of people to put his wisdom and, and anointing on to build the temple. There's, there's a lot of simple things there. We're building the church. We're seeing to the church. We're, we're administering the the distribution of relief now we don't know everything that was going on there's there's different ideas about what was happening here but let's just look at the church how the church is evolving as it were they're figuring out all right the pastor can't do everything he needs a group of people to see to the church as we see these things then we see down here it, it says that they in verse 4, but we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and the ministry of the word. So they're, they're differentiating the, the work that needs to be done and the word that needs to be brought out. So attending to God and bringing what God has for a word to the people and then that which would be relief, that, that money that was coming to them, the, the, so that nobody was lacking. Is that what was happening? The, the temple was, had people seen to all these people. People started getting saved, coming to the church instead of the temple. And, and now they're, they're being neglected. So that this ministration of, as offerings come in, People were selling lands and, and the, the whole price of it, that distribution could be made to these people. And as we see these things, we see down here how it's conveyed. Remember Moses, um, whenever the, um, when he was trying to hear and judge between the, the Israelites in the wilderness of who did this right and who did that wrong and being a judge as if it were, right? And, and it was brought to his attention by God that you need to hearken unto what Jethro was saying. And here, put other people to hear these simpler cases and then the harder cases be brought to you only. Because he was, he was hearing people from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, and there was still not everybody getting heard. As all of this comes together, you're seeing that that same way, 
he's he's going to take and they're going to pray believe god for this administration of the 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 church to be done through other men and he's going to lay hands on them and i believe that same spirit that spirit just as it became on those in exodus 35 5 as well as when when moses prayed for those others and laid his hands on those others to judge and see to cases that were smaller easier as it were right and, and then it comes down here in verse 6 and it says these they presented to the apostles who after prayed after prayer laid their hands on them now as we see this this taking place we see that's how the church started to evolve there's people that have to see to the administration of the church those that see to the word being brought forth and then the helps ministry helping the administration okay so then we come down here in in uh, verse 7 it says and the message of God kept on spreading they did it right they're they're seeing that they did it right because the word kept on spreading and and a large number of priests were obedient to the faith in Jesus as the Messiah through whom is obtained eternal salvation of the kingdom let me read that whole thing because I, I think I missed part of the, the understanding there and the message of God kept on spreading and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and besides, a large number of the priests were obedient. Do you see it? The priests from the temple are coming over. And here, when you have people that were in charge already, trained up, now you've got people being brought in that are trained up to help with the administration. How did we get on administration today? But God... But God is, is bringing us into the understanding that there's administration that has to happen in the church. Okay, well, now look at Stephen here. And, and I really like this story because it's talking about me. <laughs> That's where my name came from, right? As we come into this, we, we look at this here now. Now Stephen, full of grace, divine blessing and favor was upon him, right? The power of the strength and ability worked great wonders and signs, miracles among the people. This is an administrator that the Holy Spirit came upon for the work of the administration of the, of the temple, not the temple, of the church, right? But you see that signs and wonders are being done. Why? Why are they being done in his life when, when the, the apostles before this time, and actually it seemed as if it was only Peter. Peter was laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. They were bringing people out into the streets that the shadow of Peter might shadow over them and they would get healed. Why is it now that you're seeing Stephen doing something and you don't hear Peter even spoke of, but that the word was going forth, the word was spreading through Peter, but now signs and wonders are done by the administrator. Now this administrator was out there with the people, among the people, doing things among the people, seeing to the people. That's where the work of the ministry is really done isn't it? And then, you know, on the, those, those days that they would gather together into the temple as one huge company, that's when the apostles would lay hands on the sick. But daily, you would see Stephen, and, and here it listed off all these others, Stephen and Philip and all these other names, right? So, as we see this coming together, it's everybody in the church is supposed to be doing this. 
not just the administrators, but those that are believers. Now, Paul, Paul is the one that brought out a lot of that teaching that it's every man, woman, and child in the church is supposed to be doing the work of the ministry. As those, um, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, as those are helping to administer, helping to bring direction to the church, the work in the ministries, they're, they're training up, they're teaching, they're, they're bringing the body of the church to the point that they can do the work of the ministry. Do you see that? How it's flowing down from the top, and you're seeing more of, as we, we've been looking at the, the book of Acts, the same way we looked at the book of Luke, because it's, it's written by the same person, it's somewhat the same continuation. And as we looked at Luke as being the winged ox, are the, the anointed one, are that anointing being upon that servant, or that, that one carrying the anointing to their worlds. As we see these all coming together, now look how it comes down in here in... Uh, let, let's, let's, boy, we're just stepping right through this because it's a short chapter. In verse 9, it says, However, some of those who belong to the synagogue of the freed are free, freedmen, freemen, Jewish slaves. So these were, as far as I understand, and, and here I can be wrong, but they were, as, as people were coming to to Christ as they were coming and being part of the church as they were getting saved were they setting people free as they were this group of freed slaves there's different ideas there but if we look at it that way watch watch what happens if we do as it was called and of the synagogues of the Cyrenians and Alexandrians Greeks is a good way to put that of those from Cilicia and the province of Asia arose undertook a debate and dispute with Stephen. Now, there's, there's times whenever you have the Holy Spirit on you that that, that wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding how to use the wisdom and the knowledge of God is flowing through you and you can speak and answer questions that would, would seem you don't have that training, but that wisdom's flowing through you from the Holy Spirit to, just as it did for Jesus, diffuse situations, di diffusing that, that onslaught against the ministry, or the diffuse that which was coming against God are coming against the anointing. Do you see it? And, and this is what's taking place. It's supposed to diffuse it. But here they get more malicious. And here, why it's, why it's not settled, I, I don't understand that one. Do I have to understand everything? This is what we're going through here daily far, is so we understand some things. And here it comes down, so they secretly instigated and instructed men to say lies against Stephen, right? And here it comes down, and here, thus they incited the peoples as well as the elders and the scribes. And they came upon Stephen and arrested him and took him before the council, and they brought in those that would lie against him. Now, they've, they've got this all built up against them. And then what do you see? The Holy Spirit, as it were, shining through the face of that glory, shining through the face of Stephen. Right at the end of this chapter, verse 15 says, Then all who sat in the council, that Sanhedrin, as they gazed intently at Stephen, saw his face saw his face 
That's like I believe they were seeing something similar to what the Israelites saw in the face of of Moses as he came down off of that mountain. Right? He had to put a veil over his face because it was glowing. I, I'm assuming you know they, they he stayed plugged in so long he came down glowing. All right, but here this his face the appearance had the appearance of the face of an angel now how how do we see an angel but light this is someone that's very enlightened and whenever you're coming from the presence of God are you glowing <laughs> we see that in Moses right so as we've seen these things today realize we're seeing the the church evolving and and changing as it were from the the disciples, the the uh, apostles doing all the work, to others doing the work, and then really, it's coming and growing because here, Stephen's doing the work of the ministry, in laying hands on, seeing miracles, he's he's seeing the wonders and the signs among the people. That's what I like to point out because it's these things that we. We need to realize that there's an, an administration and then there's the, the body of believers that are doing the work of the ministry. And, and as we see these things, you can see that in Hebrews, uh, as we look at, in different areas and different places, we see the administration of the body being that uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Right, those are teaching the body to do the work of the ministry now, because here is it better just to have one person doing it all, the pastor doing all the work of the the church, or would it be better to have all the church being trained by the pastor to do the work of the ministry? Yeah, it's better. It's better for all of us to take our place, and and remember, it's God that loves us. And here, we love you here at church, and as we love one another, we can join and lock arms with one another and do the work of the ministry. And then, remember, it's Jesus is Lord, right? He's the one guiding the church into what to do, how to do it. Through, through those that are the apostles, the the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, as, as they get something from God, they're instructing the body, bringing forth the word from God, and then we all, we all lock arms together and we go and do the work of the ministry. This, this is good, isn't it? This is when we, we reach out to the neighborhoods around about the churches. This is when we reach out even farther to those that... that are, are in other areas and and as we go to our, our places of work and and those places we see different things happen we see the miracles happening as it was some great wonders and signs among the people that's that's what we are seeing right that's that's what the year of the church is supposed to be about and as we look at this further here we see that the Holy Spirit is there. If we come into something we can't handle, He's there to flow through us the wisdom, the understanding, the, the knowledge and wisdom with understanding how to, how to bring it forth, how to explain it to people, to diffuse situations, to, to take you beyond where you're at. And, and here... We want you to take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today. God's with you. Expect him to do great exploits through you. Bye-bye.